Have you noticed how corrupt leaders and their supporters invoke the concept of Ubuntu when they are criticized? They talk about the African philosophy of shared humanity, but only when it comes to holding them accountable. What's strange is, when they were stealing money that could have given a home, a road, or a school to our people, Ubuntu was suddenly forgotten. It conveniently comes back to their memory when they must be held accountable. If I pay my taxes and expect you to provide services, there's no such a thing as Ubuntu to force me into being docile or timid instead of asking you where the services I am entitled to are. I don't care whether you're Jacob Zuma or Cyril Ramaphosa, Helen Zilla or Julius Malema. Don't remember and demand Ubuntu from me when I call you out for the disrespectful and irresponsible behavior you engaged in when you forgot that Ubuntu existed. If I gave you my money, which you are forcing me to give you, by the way, through tax, then I expect you to deliver the service. Finish and Claude. Ubuntu is dying and our people themselves are involved in the extinction of Ubuntu. It did not die during apartheid, it started dying after apartheid. We, we have something in, in our African uh, community, something that is very difficult to put into English. It is, it is called Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the essence of being human. And it says, a solitary human being is a contradiction in terms. I can't be a human being on my lonesome. I wouldn't know how to speak as a human being. I wouldn't know how to think as a human being. I wouldn't know how to walk as a human being. I have to learn from other human beings how to be human. And so Ubuntu, Ubuntu says, my humanity is bound up in yours. I am only because you are. And, and we, we then say, a person is a person through other persons. About two years ago, my husband forgot his bag on a taxi on his way to work one day. He does that sometimes, just forgets. <laughs> so he forgot the bag when he was getting off the taxi and then realized it when he was at work. He thought to himself, at least he had gotten on a taxi from the taxi rank that he used daily with people that recognized him. So one of them probably took it and kept it or gave it to the taxi driver or something like that. So at least he could go to the taxi rank and announce that he lost his bag and someone would be kind enough to return the bag. That's what he told himself. The next day, he went to the taxi rank. He went to announce it over three days. Repeatedly over three days and everyone saw him there from 6am to 8am announcing that his bag had been lost. He described the bag and begged for people to return it. What made this very serious was that in the bag was his passport with a permit and many other important documents and there was also a 200 rand note in there. Imagine that. These are people who always catch the taxi there every day. But no one would say, yes, I saw your bag or I found your bag. My husband then changed the game up. Whoever brings my bag, I'll give you a thousand rand. And a man stepped forward and said he thinks he'll go and ask around at the other taxi rank where the taxi ended up and they exchanged numbers. Later that same day, he called my husband claiming that he had found the bag. <laughs> the following day, he brought the bag. The 200 rand that was in the bag was gone, but the identity documents were returned and we were very grateful for that. And my husband gave him 800 rand instead of a thousand since he had given himself the 200 rand. Many people in South Africa are just like that man. They see you struggling and will not bother to help you until they stand to benefit from that. Where's Ubuntu there?
I'm sure almost all of us have a personal story that shows the erosion of Ubuntu in our society. And if you are fortunate enough to not have a story, here's a question. If you have an accident right now and your car has a bunch of laptops or cash that falls out onto the street, do you think that people will help you pick up your goods and make sure your property does not get lost? The answer is simple. It depends. It depends on where the accident happened and around which type of people. People who have lost the value of Ubuntu or people who still care about it. And I think we can all agree that Ubuntu is not a matter of race. They are black, white, Indian and colored people who still embody Ubuntu and those who have lost it. The loss of Ubuntu is reflected in our interactions with each other. Have you seen how we have lost trust and honor among ourselves? How we cannot be certain that even after sending that service provider that money, will he actually come to fix your geezer, your car or your couch? While we fail to show Ubuntu in our interactions with each other, we honor the thieves and criminals that have hurt and destroyed our lives, calling them with endearing titles and giving them respect that they do not deserve. Anyway, back to the accident example. Depending on what type of people are around when you have that accident, you're either going to be safe or that will be the last day you see those valuables. This has happened over and over again. This is not the first time and it will not be the last time, unfortunately. Before we proceed, if our content is to your liking, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share the videos with other citizens and remember to beware of the comrades. You know very well who the owner of those soft drinks is. You know very well that they are not yours and that is exactly why you're running. That is exactly why you fear getting caught. You're laughing as you do it because you think it's funny. Meanwhile, the police officer just stood by, didn't he? As if he doesn't know that this is illegal. As if he doesn't know that his job is to enforce the law, which includes stopping people from stealing and arresting those who do steal. This shows you something about us as people. It is not that we are law-abiding citizens that makes us not to steal. It's only that we fear being caught. In the event that we are sure that we might get away with it, many of us will slander and steal at the detriment of others. Most of us will kill if it benefits our pockets. And please, don't tell me the nonsense about poverty here. This is the same mindset we find with many people, whether they are poor or well off. Look at this. Mbuso Molloy, better known as the Woolworths looter, has been sentenced to 18 months house arrest. Molloy appeared at the Durban Magistrates Court where he was also slapped with a community service order of 16 hours every month. He was captured on video exiting a Woolworths store in Durban with a basket of goods he'd stolen and entering his Mercedes Benz during that July unrest in 2021. That's a man driving a Mercedes Benz and he chose to steal things that did not belong to him. He joined the looters in Woolies. His mistake, he had a Mercedes Benz and someone recorded him and hence an example was made of him. Unfortunately for him, he was not a politician and hence he had no one to save him. Saying that people steal because they are poor is an excuse. We all know someone who was in dire poverty and chose to not steal. My grandparents were poor and instead of stealing, they chose to feed their children mahoho, the bottom of the pup, as breakfast. They had no food to take with to school and instead of stealing other people's lunch boxes, my mom and her brothers and sisters came home to have pup or porridge or whatever was available on the day, if anything. Poverty is not an excuse for stealing. If it were, all poor people would be criminals and no rich people would be. But we know of many stories that contradict this. Here's one. It's been a tumultuous week for Steinhoff International. These are the quiet offices of the global furniture retailer in Weinberg, Johannesburg. You would never think these offices are connected into what's turning into a global scandal. Just a week ago, Steinhoff was challenging world furniture giants IKEA for dominance. 
Now, it has all gone to dust. The broad tale could be told through the share price. It collapsed to a record low of 6 rand, down 80% in three days. The shot that set it off was the abrupt departure of its CEO, Marcus Joester, a South African-born millionaire, until now. Did Marcus Joester engage in this illegal activity because he was poor? Are we supposed to apply Ubuntu towards Marcus Joester and all of his cronies at Steinhoff? It is a choice, and this is not a one-person issue. This is actually a national issue with many people willing to engage in this nonsense. Some people do it on a small scale, while others do it on a large scale. Others do it in an unsophisticated way, while others do it in a very sophisticated manner. This is what the market believes Steinhoff was doing. They set up companies off the balance sheet to obscure losses and inflate earnings. Among them, Campion Capital, controlled by associate of Uester, Southern View Finance, controlled by South African billionaire Christo Visa, and Genesis Investment Management, controlled by ex-Steinhoff CEO Sidgar Schmidt. Steinhoff's complex balance sheet structure duped most investors. Where was Ubuntu and Marcus Joester and others risked people's pensions? When VBS looters stole old people's investments and pensions? We, we need this communal harmony if we're going to survive at all. And anger and revenge and bitterness are corrosive of this harmony and, and you, 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 you know it, you've, you've experienced how when, when you are really angry with someone, it does something to your tam-tam <laughs> and, 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 and you, it does something to your, to your blood pressure. So, forgiving, forgiving is actually not being altruistic. You are not being nice to the other guy. When you forgive, you are actually being nice to yourself. The decline in Ubuntu is seen in large organizations such as PIC and Steinhoff, and it's seen in our everyday lives where people are cheated by those they get into business deals with. We see the absence of Ubuntu in Zuma spending hundreds of millions of our money to upgrade his house. We see the absence of Ubuntu and the taxes we pay have not been repairing and maintaining the roads. It is because of the same decline in Ubuntu that we see that most people with cars are not willing to offer lifts to stranded motorists or pedestrians. Because we as people have become cold, so cold, and so many of us. When we get lifts from people, we are willing to steal a phone and even worse. Stopping to give pedestrians a lift is something you do knowing very well that this ride can easily go sideways. If the pedestrian does not mug the driver, then the pedestrian might get mugged by the driver. Either one could get harassed or violated in various ways. Dear South Africans, Ubuntu needs to come back and we will fight for it to come back. But when you hear people saying stop telling the truth about Zuma, just respect Zuma because he's old or that we should pay the former public protector 10 million rand simply because of Ubuntu, tell them to get lost. That is not Ubuntu. It is the manipulation of Ubuntu. That is the decay, the decay of Ubuntu. Let's all simply do the right thing. Not because if you do the wrong thing, you might get caught. Not because you have not had an opportunity to do the wrong things. Choose to do the right thing always. Don't do it because this person is old and you automatically honor them. No, do it because it is the right thing to do. The angels that showed Satan Ubuntu were ejected from heaven with him. So please, do the right thing. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like and share the video with other citizens. I'm Katleron. This is Citizen Concerned and until next time, beware of the comrades.